Have you ever stopped to think about a city? What made it grow so big and what made it grow where it is? No two cities are exactly alike, but all of them grew up in pretty much the same way. In the beginning, crude trails are cut through the wilderness and a junction becomes a logical place to establish a trading post. As more and more men use the trails, the trading post becomes a trading center. Rivers, too, are trade routes which cause the town to grow. The surrounding country may be rich in farmland, forests, or mineral deposits. These add to the wealth of the town and draw people to it. Factories rise to turn these natural resources into things men buy. The early trails become roads. Railroads are built. A good harbor becomes a seaport. Roads grow into wide motor highways. Finally, air trade routes are established to serve what is now a giant trading center. Leaving our mythical city, Let's see how this process of growth has given rise to the principal trading centers of the Pacific Coast. Seattle, Portland, San Francisco, Los Angeles, and San Diego. Seattle is located on Puget Sound and is easily reached by ocean-going ships. It is also the end of the line for several transcontinental railroads. Nearby are lands rich in forests, agricultural products, and mineral resources. These are the things that have made Seattle grow. The harbor of Seattle is the finest in the Northwest. Besides serving passenger and freight ships from all over the world, it is the center of a giant ship repair and shipbuilding industry. Into Seattle's freight yards come products destined for shipment overseas and raw materials from nearby areas. Being near sources of raw materials, Seattle has become an important manufacturing center. Grain elevators are another familiar sight. Much of the wheat grown in eastern Washington comes to Seattle to be milled into flour. Lumbering is one of the main industries of Seattle and the entire Pacific Northwest. The importance of this industry is evident not only in the lumber mills, but throughout downtown Seattle, where we find the offices of many lumber companies, banks which have grown big on lumber, and wholesalers who supply the needs of the lumber camps and sawmills. In fact, the lumbering industry is so important that it fills two-thirds of the freight cars which go out of Seattle and it is one of the main causes for Seattle's growing to be the third largest trading center on the Pacific Coast. Less than 200 miles south of Seattle is another city, which is like it in many ways. Portland has grown at the center of land trade routes leading through the Puget Sound Valley, the Willamette Valley, and the Columbia Valley. Ocean ships travel up the Columbia and Willamette rivers to a fine river port located about 100 miles from the sea. Like the city of Seattle, Portland is not only a trading center, but the home of a big shipbuilding and ship repair industry. In the same way, grain elevators, flour mills, and lumber mills are all familiar sights around Portland. The dams across the Columbia River have also contributed to the growth of Portland by providing cheap electric power. This has made the area the center of the new electrochemical industries, turning out millions of pounds of aluminum and magnesium. Thus, a modern industry adds to the trade of Portland, which had its beginning even before the days of the Oregon Trail. Second largest city of the Pacific Coast is San Francisco. Most famous as one of the world's great seaports, it is also the center of many land trade routes. The rich Central Valley of California has also contributed much to the city's growth. Directly or indirectly, this great harbor has created many of the jobs at which the people of San Francisco work. Not only are there jobs on the ships themselves, 
but also in the yards which build and repair the ships, and on the docks, loading and unloading finished products and raw materials. These raw materials make other jobs, processing coffee and cocoa brought in from South America, and refining cane sugar imported from the Hawaiian Islands. In addition, many people are employed in shipping and canning the fruits and vegetables raised in the Central Valley and in the city's meatpacking business. All these products flow out through San Francisco's land trade routes. Air trade routes also meet in San Francisco, linking it with other cities on the continent and around the world. San Francisco is built among hills so steep that ordinary streetcars cannot make the grade, so cable cars are used. Below the hills is the Great Bay, spanned by the famous bridges which link neighboring cities to San Francisco and so enhance its importance as a trading center. In Southern California is the leading trading center of the West, Los Angeles. This famous city owes its growth chiefly to the railroads, the surrounding agricultural regions, and the nearby oil fields. With these to grow on, Los Angeles has also become one of the world's largest cities. And in the process of growing, it has absorbed many nearby towns within its outer limits. The climate has also helped the city to grow. Not only does the mild weather and the year-round sunshine attract tourists and vacationists, but years ago, it attracted the great motion picture studios to Southern California. The movies have grown to be a giant industry, with a payroll in this area second only to the petroleum industry. Only Texas produces more oil than the state of California. The refining and processing of these vast oil resources is the largest industry of Los Angeles. Synthetic rubber is now being produced from oil in great new factories. With oil available as a cheap fuel, Los Angeles has become an important manufacturing center. It is the country's largest manufacturer of oil well machinery, such as that being installed here. It is a leader in the production of airplanes. More automobiles are assembled here than in any city except Detroit. Los Angeles makes almost as many tires as Akron, Ohio, and as much furniture as Grand Rapids, Michigan. In the manufacture of clothing, it ranks fourth in the nation. Unlike the other trading centers we have seen, Los Angeles had no ready-made natural harbor, but at San Pedro, that handicap has been overcome. Here, a modern harbor has been built to handle outgoing shipments of oil and other products, and incoming shipments of lumber and other materials bound for the factories. As a center of air transportation, Los Angeles leads the West. Passenger travel has been heavy for many years. Now, the air lanes are becoming real trade routes, especially valuable for shipping perishable goods. The last of the major trading centers is San Diego, which has fewer industries than the others and a limited number of trade routes. However, like Los Angeles, San Diego has a mild climate, and so it makes quite a business of catering to tourists. The principal industry is canning fish and other products of the sea. San Diego is the home of a huge naval operating base and training center. While this is not exactly an industry, it helps to build a city in the same way, for it makes jobs and adds to the prosperity of the community. And so we see that while each of the five major trading centers of the Pacific Coast has its unique characteristics, all have grown for the same reasons as the mythical city we started with. A number of trade routes came together over land and water and through the air. The surrounding country is rich in farmland, forests, or mineral resources. And these give rise to the growth of industrial activity. 
All these things make jobs, drawing people from everywhere and building up a city alive with the activity of a giant trading center.